Hey, what's up? It's Adam Smith from the Commander Smiths, and it is proxy time. Uh, this week, working on Verdant Catacombs. This is my very first uh, proxy time video for fetches. I have done four other fetches. You can check those out on Twitter at hashtag proxy of the week. Uh, this is also coinciding with the dual land. So I've been doing the, the OG dual lands first, and then I have the uh, fetch land follow. So I did do Bayou a few weeks ago on proxy of the week, but I have not done a proxy time video. So this will be the first time for that for fetches. Uh, stick around and see how we turn this verdant catacombs into a nice looking proxy. <laughs> All right, guys, working on Verdant Catacombs today. This will be the first time I've worked on a fetch uh, for a proxy time video. I have four other ones that I've done before. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the hard part is trying to choose which landscape you want to use. So uh, kind of interesting with this, uh, there is a lot, a lot to choose from from here. So when you check out Scryfall and do search um, Verdant Catacombs is all the, the they come up with. Uh, you really have the, the original ones right here. Uh, what really stuck out to me is actually the new one, the new, uh, expedition one. I really like the way this one looked and actually I found a pretty sweet looking one here. So the, the, the colors and everything are pretty vibrant compared to this is a little brighter than I would like. It's kind of blown out there, but I got this art pretty good, high quality there. So that's going to work out perfect. So yeah, let's jump right into this here. So this is the one I got. Uh, the other reason why I kind of like this one is you have all this landscape stuff that we can probably use, uh, to frame this card out. So I think there's a lot of cool stuff we can do here. So first things first, let's just start highlighting stuff. Uh, after a while here, you think that I might just, if people, well, let's see, I always want to show how it's done. Like basically start to finish when I'm doing this. Cause I was gonna say, I could have this highlighted beforehand, but you know, there might be people that just jump on and see the videos and they're like, how did he do that? What, why is that all highlighted? Uh, so I will grab that whole thing there. Normally, sometimes I like to separate it, but I like seeing the, the color, the green color right there going into black, showing that it is a dual land. That's actually why I picked, uh, this one as well. When I was on, uh, back to that, uh, I picked this one as the art cause I like that color gradient there, the black to the green. This is a little more subtle. I wanted that that strong gradient between the two. So that's why I went with that one. Uh, all right, so I got the bottom looking pretty good. No letters are highlighted, so we're good there. Let's move on up to the top, get this going. Oh, a little more than I'd like there. That looks pretty solid. All right, that looks good. I think we're good, curve, curve. That was an easy one. It It worked out nice. I like that when it's easy, but I don't have to mess around with it when I move it on over. So control C, control V. Whoa, look how small that sucker is. So one key thing is we, you want to make sure you get, oh, I think I'm seeing something. Is that wrong there? Look how faded that is. Let's make sure that that's not going to stay that way. Okay. It's just, it was what I was going to say though. I'm going to delete this because if you fiddle around with it and you zoom it out and then zoom it in and do that, the image itself kind of can get distorted, not distorted, just faded. It's weird how it does that. Uh, so if I was to zoom it out and then save it there and then I'm like, no, I want it smaller and then bigger, everything will become blurry. So you just want to, especially when you have something that's that small, I know it'd suck if it was that small, but if it's that small, you really want to mess with it a little. You want to make sure you have it in the right spot before you hit OK here, because uh, you don't want to you don't want it to come out blurry, because then that just looks like shit. So, uh, all right. So I want to line this up so we got the framing. So we got this path coming through. I might use that as part of this taking over that. Most people know what the fetches are, so I'm not as afraid to cover up a fetch land with. The art. So I also like this sticking up here. So I think because that'll come up through here, we're going to utilize some of this tree stuff coming down here. That'll look excellent. So I actually do want it to sit a little higher. Also, if you look at the bottom here, we have the, you know, the Wizard of the Coast stuff. 
I kind of want to cut that out. So we'll have this sit a little higher than normal. Uh, I do want to try to capture as much of the card as possible. So I think right about there looks good. All right, see, solid. It's not blurry, even though it was a very small image. Let's crop this bad boy. I'm a little worried. Hang on, I'm gonna pause this for a sec. I'm gonna shift this, oops. Shift this down just a little bit because it seems a little high there. It's so high right now. Uh, okay, now let's do the uh, cropping. Now, because I did that, now I'm gonna actually have to draw it because I canceled my other crop. All right, so we wanna cut that bottom out. My sides look solid, no. Well, you gotta move this sucker in there. Top looks good, bottom looks good. You, you leave a little space because then when you bring it into Word, it, you're gonna be cropping it again. So I typically make it a little bit bigger than normal, but I try to get it as close as possible, but that looks pretty good right there. Uh, all right, let's see through this bad boy and figure out what we're doing here. Okay, let's zoom in. Oh yeah, this is gonna look solid coming through here like that, but we don't wanna do too much. So we gotta figure out which stuff we want to come through. Do I want this side of the trees coming through this path and just cutting off this? That would seem like the best option because you have this path almost kind of leading to your foreground. It'd be kind of weird if this was behind your text and you bring the other side out. But to kind of do a visual of it, just do a quick test. Just run, don't even be specific with it. Don't be detailed with anything. Just see what it looks like really quick. So that's what I'm gonna really, I'm gonna do quick to see which I like best. So let's first start with this side because I have a feeling it's gonna be the other side. This has a cooler landscape to it, but I think the other side is what we wanna really, would make the most sense. All right, so let's zoom out. That does look pretty solid. I like how that's looking. Now let's do the other side. I have got to jump back up here. We're going to do this. And this is just a quick, just painting, just to see what this would look like. And really that makes the most sense because that, that path comes to the foreground. It leads you into the picture where the other one was cool. It just didn't make sense for what is happening in this picture. So that's the way we're going to go. Now let's get detailed. So we got everything done there. Let's get back on our layer one here. Uh, we can try and see if it'll highlight, but I don't think it'll highlight the things we want. So let's just start removing stuff here. I did I already go crazy with it? Let's get the easy stuff first. So we know it's gonna be gone there. Go there. All right, sometimes what's easier too is to hot, uh, start basically doing a line because then you can start pushing everything from that point on now you have your your barrier between stuff so we do want this to kind of stay in here too because that is in front so you we're gonna bring that in as well and i kind of just do random i guess i could have just waited till the end to hit this but i also don't want to forget this because this is key with how everything looks here so we're gonna draw a couple lines, get a little detailed with that, trace it out. And then you can start filling everything in after you've had it traced out. I have a, an idea of what I wanna do with the symbol. So I, I, when we get to that point, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, but like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so this will be the first time I've done the proxy time video. I've done, or for fetches. Uh, I did, actually, I probably didn't mention it in that intro. I cut a couple intros. But if you don't have fetches, you definitely need to go get those. Uh, and then you can go get a proxy. I mean, that's the rules that we use for our play group for Commander. Uh, fetches are a necessary thing. You need to get those. And eventually, if you can, get the original duels. I know they're really expensive, but... They're key, man, and once you have them, just start playing with proxies because you own the dang card. Why not play with cards that are made like that? And that's why I like doing these proxies is I like designing these, and so I enjoy, you know, I, there's a thing of, like, commander players like to kind of show off their cards and stuff. Well, 
I don't want to be playing <laughs> with my five hundred dollar underground C. Actually, probably even more than that. It, it, at some point, it was almost a thousand bucks. But I don't. Oh, I don't know if that's where I want. That seems like a lower part. I don't know if that's what I want there. This ridge coming up here. Does that feel like that's below? Yeah, I almost feel like that this ridge kind of goes here. And I think this is down below. So we're, we're going to skip um, highlighting that. But we'll get everything else. So let's just keep going. But back to my, uh, my thought here is get those fetches if that you don't have them. Because once you own them, I mean, it also depends on your play group. Our play group uh, agreed years ago that if you own the card, you can play with proxies of the card. But you have to make proxies so people know what they are and, you know, what they do and everything. You can't, like, make these random proxies. And there's something about making it look good, you know. And that's what I have really enjoyed about this is I enjoy how these turn out and love playing with them more than I like playing with the original cards because they just look fantastic. Not, I'm not bragging or anything, a humble brag, but I, I just, they really, I become proud of what these are and making these and it just looks solid in a deck. So, all right. So I, the funny thing is the reason why I did not make the duels or the fetches is actually the proxy guy, which is, he's an excellent, excellent making proxies. He had some good images out there that you can get in on Google. Like if you want to go out there right now and just find his images. That's how I was using my proxies before as I was just, you know, using, uh, the way you can check out the video that I, I made to show you how to make proxies from start to finish. But I just take his art from Google. And I mentioned that in the video that you can just go on Google and find any art and just use that or anybody else that's made a proxy that card. And I give you the dimensions of how to do it. So, uh, that's also nice, but he has such great cards that I was like, I don't need to make proxies. Well, now it's gotten to a point where I kind of, I do want to make proxy. I, I don't play with anybody else's art anymore. I only play or use proxies that I have made. So it's kind of changed a little bit. I mean, I still, I didn't have these, the fetches or the duels. So I'm still using the proxy guys art that he has out there on Google uh, for my stuff. But um, yeah, and I definitely want to use this moss in here because that looks solid. And the thing I might want to do here though is really draw in these ropes in there the the vines that are coming off so we're gonna make this really small and draw those in because that that looks pretty solid if we get those in there but yeah you can find any of those proxies out there i, I think you just do a google search and I, i'm pretty sure they're still out there i mean once they hit the go hit the googles I just want to draw that. I kind of drew that one in. And that's what's kind of interesting about this one is I can probably draw this. So I don't want some of those to just end like that. It almost has that rope feel. So maybe I'll draw a few in there like that. That looked kind of silly. Maybe I'll just come down like that, kind of connect it into things, connect it into the E. That could be solid. Does that look legit? Yeah. It, and I drew those in. Those aren't actually part of the picture, but I think it looks a lot more solid than uh, just having those hang there in midair. So we'll just draw this to end down. It's like a nice little cliff there. Fill that in there. So yeah, let's just uh, draw a couple. Oops, not like that. Back that up a little bit. We'll draw a few of those in there. The vines kind of connecting there. I think that looks pretty solid. Oh yeah. All right, so then let's zoom in. Let's get the rest of this. There's a lot more <laughs> work than I was actually thinking it would be. I was like, ah, oh, this will be easy. I know what I'm going to do here. But there's a lot of uh, pieces, rocks shooting up some, I don't remember, slag tight, sticking tight to the ceiling. Might is on the ground, right? I don't know. I'm probably wrong about that. <laughs> So like, there's a, there's a, there's a trick to that. I know I've already said this before. I have another video where I did that exact same thing. I think it, oh, it was proxy time. Uh, when I did a uh, muta vault, <laughs> I couldn't remember. And somebody actually corrected me on uh, YouTube and it was like, ah, oh, so like tight is you'd think I learn after somebody corrected me, but who would have thought that I'd have another card where I'm dealing with 
I, I, do those look like even like slug tights or mites? Because it almost just looks like it's a piece of rock. I think that's maybe that's what it is. It's just rocks jetting up. That's what we're gonna say. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're drawing that in. Got to make sure it doesn't look out of place. No, that looks pretty cool. Now, like I said in the beginning, is I don't mind as much that I am uh, covering the words on this one because. Most people know what the fetches do. They come into play so quick and people sack them, go get your land you're looking for, and that's it. So there isn't any like sitting on the battlefield trying to decide what this does. Let me look at the card. So these are quicker. You know, it, it that's another thing actually why I hadn't touched these in a while or hadn't done these yet is because fetches are so quick. You, you get them in, you get them out. So there's not a lot of uh, looking at the card and awe and being like, oh, that's a really good looking proxy you got there. Because they're gone quick. They're in your graveyard. So everybody can admire it from your graveyard. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm really glad that I started doing this because I needed to for my collection. All right. Um, uh, trying to decide. I think I do just grab all that instead of trying to be specific there. Let's zoom in a little bit. Man, this one's going to be... A little more hands on with this than I was thinking, but it's going to look great. I'm not going to grab those because those look like those are in the distance. It doesn't look like it's a part of this rock ridge here. We're going to smooth that out a bit. And let's see, does that feel, I already started doing it here. Yeah, that feels like it's a part of it. So we're going to grab the rest of this tree here. And it looks like these roots, roots or roots, however you want to say it. Looks like those come in. So we need to shrink this down a little bit. Uh, let's just keep tracing the outside of this because then you can fill it in after you've had it traced. Well, yeah, back to what I was saying with the... Uh, you know, dual lands and fetches. If you don't have them, I totally understand. It's it's really expensive to get these, but that's that's the the beauty of making these proxies is it, one have a goal of. I don't know if I liked how that went. Oh, oh, all the way back. Have a goal. It's kind of a nice goal to re to shoot for to try to get the dual lands or try to get the the uh, the fetches, and then once you get them, you own it. Just make sure your play group kind of agrees to it and then make a ton of poc proxies and they go in every single deck. It just makes life so much easier. And the thing is, is if people give you shit about it, you just go, well, here's my binder. It shows you where I own this card or where it is. I won't bring it with like, that's the thing is I'm not going to bring my binder with because everything that I have in there is $5 or more too much money to be bringing around. That was another reason why this was a good idea to do proxies is because I didn't want to have my deck, you know, I had a deck, I had an Animar deck that was over a thousand dollars. But that's like 10 years ago, over a thousand dollars. Um, because it, the, the duels weren't that much at that time. I would have the, the duels. Uh, what it was, it, it was underground C was the most expensive, is the most expensive right now. But that one was only 50 bucks. I got my underground C for $42. Oh, good and for you. Shortly after that is when everything started going up. So, I mean, my deck was a thousand bucks and that was not including, I mean, it was including the duels, but it wasn't the duels being at where they are now. Now, if I played with that deck, that'd probably be a couple grand. So, and it just doesn't make sense to take those to a card shop <laughs> like have somebody steal them or something happen or somebody spill something over them so i've really liked the change of actually doing the proxies all right now let's zoom out oh see all that time sucks that it takes a little bit but look how solid that looks that looks absolutely fantastic so we move let's see what it looks like when it yeah that looks really good looks really good okay so Next part, I was really, I knew what I was going to do at the top. I'm going to have these tree branches really just come out more of not the tree branches, 
just more of the uh, the leaves of this, all this coming out. So that's, oh, wait, are these leaves or are these Seleg tights? They are. They're Seleg, <laughs> dang it, it is Seleg tights and mites. Ah, I didn't realize that. I thought it was like, you know, the uh, willow tree-esque thing where it was bunches of leaves. Um, so we're going to have those stick out. I don't know if I want, we're going to start with the, uh, Slag tights. I'm going with that. That's that's what I think it is. And I may have picked the wrong. I got a 50-50 chance of guessing if I got it right or not. All right. Does it look like it ends there? Yeah, we'll just take that right out. Oh, that looks good. All right. Let's move on to the next guy. Yeah, that looks good. Man, I totally thought that these were the, uh, the branches. I want to zoom in a little bit here for that. Uh, so there's a lot more. So this will give you that cave feel. So I guess that makes sense. Verdant catacombs. You're in the catacombs of a cave. Uh, Adam, come on, put it together. This is, a new, this is a new cart. It's a new art. I hadn't seen this art. So give me a break. That's, that's what I'm going with. Cause, But it's still a really solid card. I like this art the most out of all of them and i i liked how the uh expeditions the frames of those look so much i love personally my preference is the full art like that's what i like but i like those so much that i was almost at a point where i was like do i do i do the frame of those because i dig those a lot uh let's see we might just take out the yeah because the cave is right there trying to see where it ends let me check that out quick oh i don't know if i like that necessarily that looks better having that still in there so we're just gonna really just put an emphasis on this select type might select type might and maybe a uh, cut out mm get way out and see because if I get rid of that it's gone on the other side one thing I am noticing up here at the top too is this branch F, F is that branch doing so if that branch is doing what it's doing we have to we have to bring this to the front Because then it's it, it's coming through, so that's gonna have to be fixed. I think we keep this the way it is—that it's cut off by the cave. We'll probably grab these pieces here, and we might just have to take a lot of this tree, like this branch, come in there. Uh, we might not mess with the other branches because it is a tree that's intertwining. So we might just leave the other part. So let me first get the rest of the cave up here. There isn't much. And you can kind of see where that's going to go. So I need about there, right there. And then grab this one there. There's a bunch of little knobbers there that are coming down. And looks like we end about there. So we need it a little smaller. I'm a little outside the lines, but when we zoom out, yeah, you're never going to notice that. So it's totally fine that that's a little outside. I can be particular. Let's just be particular because that's how I am. And let's trace a little bit better. Yeah. There we go. Got a little knobber there. It's just a little guy. We kind of want to show that point a little bit there. There we go. Move over. I can't tell. Oh yeah, we got a big chunk here. And that's the thing is I could not tell what that was necessarily. Oh yeah, that's a big chunk. Now bring it in there. All right, so it's got to connect to the cave. So we are going to lose a part of that. We're losing a lot of the uh, 
the title because of the cave, but kind of need it in there. So because we took it out over there, we are going to continue the cave going here. I know for sure that's the cave. Now I got to check and see if that other part jets out there. Is that actual cave? Okay, get this down a little bit. That looks like it, doesn't it? Fill it in there. I'm going to keep my finger on it this time. And we may just check and see if we like how it turns out. Let's bring that back up. Yeah. Okay. See, now it actually... <laughs> now that I know it's not a the tree branches or the, the leaves and all that, it really looks like a cave now. I really like that a lot. Uh, but we got to mess with that branch. I think we're fine with the side. Yeah, that side looks solid. Solid, solid. So let's move back because this would just get funky. So we're going to do one branch. We're going to bring that guy forward. Because if I don't, it just doesn't fit. Doesn't fit with what we're doing here. You can't have the text box, have these select type mites come down uh, and I get a little more precise of that and then you have this random branch just sticking in front of it and coming out of the card now we could end it there and almost have the branch split off let's see if that actually works now we don't have to get crazy with it we have the branch it splits you have one going to the back it's splitting around your text box I can, I can live with that, and actually, I like that. I like doing that a lot of times. Okay. This looks like a solid card. This looks amazing, actually. Probably one of my best fetches that I've done, or one of my favorite that I've done. Uh, okay, so one thing I wanted to do, so we got to get that card logo in there. The funny thing is, is where I originally had planned, I don't think I could do it because... The picture is now a little more cut off than I was I was anticipating putting it right there. And almost because there's actually like a waterfall coming here. But now that I have everything else in front of it, you don't see that much anymore. So let's just get that guy on there and we can start figuring out what we want to do with it. So my, you see there's that waterfall. So that's what I was originally going to have it kind of coming out of there. I've done that before with another... It might have even been a dual land that I did that with. Um, not sure if that's the place I want it. I'm trying to see if there's anywhere else on this path. Is there anything that has like a wrapping effect? I mean, you could have it go intertwined with these branches here. Or even sneak it in there. Or even have it in the tree branches. That could be interesting might be a lot more work but could have it rest how do we have it resting in here oh man and i had such a good idea with i mean maybe i just test that out first <laughs> maybe that's just the simplest option uh okay so i wanted it to kind of become part of where the water was coming from. Kind of almost like it's a cave. It's the Kit Commander Smith cave. So let's make this see through here. Uh, then we are going to bring out not that. We want the stamp tool. Nope, you aren't doing that. Let's go to the actual image. So there's that. And we want the cave to kind of so it's sitting there. So it Comes part of the picture. Is there anything else in this that can kind of blend that in a little bit? All right, let's see how this looks zoomed out. Ah, it's a nice little hidden guy there. Yeah, that's that's not bad. I actually I think I like how that turned out. Having it just kind of sit there, it's chill. It's nothing crazy. No cool little effects I'm using with it, but I I think it's cool just kind of sitting there. Uh, I think the other stuff might be just too much. I could have it hanging in the trees, but really we don't have a good cradle effect up there. So I'll, 
I don't think that would turn out very well. This just, it's a nice little subtle. This is, this is Commander Smith. Huh. All right. Well, that turned out pretty sweet. The overall card, I dig it. All right, making sure all my layers are right. I'm about 70%. Uh, we could bring this down maybe even more. I'll probably keep it at that 40, 30 range. Yeah, that looks pretty solid. Well, yeah, I'm very happy with this. This actually turned out very nice. Uh, like I, I mentioned before, is you guys, uh, you could check out any of these fetches or the dual lines like I talked about. You go check out Twitter, hashtag proxy of the week. Uh, this is the fifth installment. There will be the total of 10 at some point. I typically have been doing one to two um, per month. So it, one dual and one fetch each month. So by the end of the year, hopefully all the duels and all the fetches will be done. So uh, thanks for watching. You can check out our podcast, The Commander Smiths. You can check in the description below for our Patreon page. Uh, also, where you can find our podcasts. Although I subscribe to the channel, you'll see all the Proxy Time videos, all the podcasts pop up on there as well. And that was Proxy Time Verdant Catacombs. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye. Tag up.